Why do I feel this this restlessness inside of me? Where does this come from? What can I do to prevent it coming back next time? You know, what do I have to change in my daily routine to to feel more healthy and to feel more good and present in the moment? But we are so afraid of what other people think of us and how other people will receive us because of our fear of dying if we are stepped out of the community, like our amygdala, that's like a part in our brain that, that creates this fear. And it just hasn't evolved with us over time as, as fast as humanity did. You reject some people or you will be rejected by some people. But if you are your authentic self, is it a bad thing that the people that don't like your authentic self are not in your life? Hello Martin, welcome to Knowing Who You Are and you are a life coach from Belgium and the first time I've come to know you it was uh, it really the first thing that interested me when I saw you that there's a coach who's uh, living in a van at the moment it's quite purpose built you have everything and you're living with your dog at the time and even to sustaining this uh, harsh weather at the moment because it's winter you have your fireplace and everything built so that's the first thing that interested me um, definitely your messages and how what work you're doing that was definitely main port of core I would say so what uh, inspired you to um, take that drastic action because as humans we need connection and you detached yourself from that you know we definitely need connection and in some some form well I'm definitely looking for a connection with this lifestyle as well but maybe more looking for a connection that really is aligned with my core values as well uh, because like the reason that I stepped into a van was because I really want freedom in my life and freedom in in like all forms of the world internal freedom but also external freedom mm. like I really like to not be tied down to one location and uh, for this the van because I have my whole house with me okay uh, so it's you know very easy to move around I made it comfortable so I don't you know I wanted a big van because I know if you actually live in it all year round, winter and summer, because it is winter, yeah. that it could make it comfortable enough. So you you mentioned two interesting ideas, the idea of freedom and also the idea of uh, not finding yourself that you're being attached to uh, anything in particular. So first of all, this idea of freedom, how do you look at it? Because freedom can have, I because I have written a poetry recently uh, where I've said that choose your fears wisely, which is very important because partly freedom comes, we look for freedom, but sometimes we end up tying ourselves down and fall into that slavery trap as well, so to speak. So how do you look at it? Well, for me, freedom, I actually also made a post on it not too long ago. For me, freedom is all about, well, the core of freedom starts internally. Hmm. And you know, for me, like that internal freedom, that's how I would call it, is really focused on allowing itself to have the freedom of choice in by saying, you know, in very small things that, that first of all, that you can choose what you do. I've, a lot of people say, I have to go to work. I have to do this. And this creates like you tie down to a schedule. Mm. Whilst if we just change our words around and we say, I choose to go to work because in the end it is your choice. Yeah. You know, it, this, this, it's a very small thing, but it starts to create that feeling of freedom of choice. And if you take it one step, one step further and you go on a slightly deeper level, then we start thinking about having the freedom of choosing our thoughts and by choosing our thoughts or mm -hmm. more so focusing on which thoughts, uh, choosing on which th thoughts we focus on, we can, by doing so, control our emotions. So, you know, that internal freedom like the core thing for me is being able to be free to control your emotions and to know how you act and react on your emotions. Mm -hmm. Because once you have this freedom of choice within you, this is going to radiate to your outside world as well and create that feeling of freedom. Definitely. I, th I think when you have this feeling of compulsion that someone is compelling you to do something which you don't want, I mean, it's all in the language sometimes because that's how this language is getting processed in your brain and this is what you feel in the subconscious. That's how it's been processed. So at yeah. some point you start feeling that 
you start feeling unhappy and you have this certain amount of anxiety because that's something that's external, not internally generated. So very well said, very nice. So did you ever feel any kind of anxiety or did you ever feel lonely? Anything as such that you experienced initially? Or um, still do. You mean now in, in the van or in general in my life? In the van and definitely we'll talk about life as well. But in the van, because it's a control environment you created for yourself willfully. Yeah. You know, first of all, one small thing I'd like to say, you know, I, I did detach from, uh, I wouldn't say society because, you know, everything is society. So I did detach from the standard way of living. I, I, mm. I prefer to put it that way. Because there's a very, you know, everything is extreme. There are extreme ways of living. And there's also people that really go off the grid and really disconnect. And I see myself as the bridge between, you know, uh, what we call society or the real world mm. and that, that um, yeah, the, the other side of the extreme. I like to be the bridge in between. Mm. But anyway, like for me, um, I've, I'm a very, very sociable person. So very easily I'm... You know, I go there, I go there, I go to friends, you know, I'm constantly visiting people. So by creating this this van for myself and having that that space for myself whilst I'm traveling, the times that I'm alone, even though I don't always realize it beforehand, I really need that time by myself. Mm. So I, will I can only remember one time that I felt lonely and that was like a little while after the breakup with my previous girlfriend. But it's I'm alone very often, but I never feel lonely. That's that's a very interesting, subtle difference. Being alone and the sense of feeling lonely. There's one thing I understand it's more about uh, you being parapetetic, like you are traveling around, meeting people. And that was the idea and getting to know more. And definitely it helps your purpose. So when did you first start thinking about it, that you, you would do something similar to that? Well, you know, I believe it started as a very, very small kid. Uh, my okay. dad always used to say that I was too adventurous for my own good. <laughs> you know, I had to know what was behind every tree, behind every building. I had to explore everything. Uh, so my dad always kind of had a feeling that there was something going on. But when I started realizing it for myself, it was actually the moment when I was like getting close to the end of school and, you know, like the, the obligated school until you're 18 in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And then after this, you have to go to high school or university or you can choose to. And you know, obviously, that's a normal take on 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 life, or what's the standard the standard yeah. path. But for me, it never felt right. You know, the school system never really fitted with me. So that was just like, what could be me? What could I do? And then, yeah, I just uh, left after school. I worked for a year, and I booked myself a European bartending school in Thailand. It was for a month at school, mm -hmm. and without real intentions of like really traveling for a long time. But actually, I was there for a week. Yeah. And I rebooked my flight with another month. And that's where, you know, all the ideas really started coming. So I think that first trip by myself to Thailand, that was actually the seed that was planted to creating the life that I'm living now. Why Thailand? Uh, I chose Thailand because I wanted a different culture, uh, okay. something away from the Western style of living and just experiencing something different. Mm -hmm. Definitely. They, they have a very rich culture, so to speak. Yeah. And the coaching part, when did you decide that you want to become a coach? When did it happen? Yeah, so that's also been a whole process. So, you know, in my life, I've always loved to help people, uh, like with mathematics in class, because I was good at mathematics or mm. when, um, like I like circus stuff, for example. And when I started learning this, I used to juggle a lot. And before I could even juggle, I just understood the movement. I was already teaching it to other people. So mm -hmm. I just always felt fulfilled when I could help other people. And it's when I started to, to find that in, inner freedom, internal freedom and in form of being able to, to choose my thoughts and so my emotions and control them and understand them better. This was then again, something I really wanted to teach other people or help other people with. And, uh, but well, for me, the idea of coaching was ignited the second I heard what a coach was. Mm. And that was, I think, one and a half year ago. There was a friend of mine who was going to do a coaching course. And we had a little talk about what it actually involves to be a coach. And then straight away, when I heard that was in my mind, that's something that could be for me. So you, you went through some formal training uh, in uh, coaching you, school or coaching academy? Well, to be honest, you know, as a traveler, uh, I was always living on break even, working three months, uh, you know, traveling until the, I ran out of money. So I just did some two like fairly cheap, just video courses to get the ID. 
Mm. And uh, most of it I learned actually through experience and talking with other coaches. And, you know, I'm still looking to do more courses to, you know, learn more. So, so far it's been especially your school of life. And yes. Exactly. That's the best school anyway. So uh, your podcast, you have started a new podcast as well uh, with uh, one of your friends. Is he a coach as well himself? Yeah, he's a mindset coach. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what's the difference between mindset coach and also in Instagram, you say authenticity coach, Yeah. but you are the, the umbrella is life coaching. So how would you yeah. differentiate? Was it because I have interviewed someone who's a transformational coach? So all this different terminology, I mean, I think people would like to know and where to go and where to seek the help for a particular purpose. How would you help or your friend? Oh, what's the difference? Yeah, so I life coach is definitely the, the, the how do you say it in English, the general name for it. Mm -hmm. And then there's all the niches, like the mindset is really, well, you know, some people, everyone looks for something in their life and some mm -hmm. someone will tell themselves in their mind, I want to live a more authentic life. Yeah. I want to transform into something like this. Uh, I need to change my mindset around a lot of problems. So it depends on how people see this in their mind, that that will be the coach they're naturally more attracted to. But just with the focus, like for me personally, I really focus on creating that authentic life because I mm -hmm. believe that creating that authentic life and being confident of being their authentic self will help them achieve their goals because every coach just wants to help their clients achieve their goals it's just like how do we get there what's the a to b okay. you know and that's like the 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 way we do the it bridge yeah the bridge yeah so my friend really really focuses on the mindset i really focus on uh creating an authentic life for transform it is yeah, so so that's how, I mean, the Growth Collective, that's how, what's it called? The Growth Collective podcast, indeed. Yeah, so it, it's more about the growth mindset, probably, because he's a mindset yeah. coach. So your connection with nature, it ha definitely had been, there had been time when you, uh, in the van, your dog is there, that's another life with you, and just the nature so did you ever feel something, this connection? Did you experience something? And did you feel any difference growing up among people day in, day out, in the morning, going to school, coming back home, then your family? But when you're living in a van, there had been times, definitely, you're just totally on your own. And you say that you're quite comfortable with that. So what have you learned? So many things. Um, you know, where to start, really. Like for me, being in the van, it's definitely those times where I am alone that I learn so much. Because, you know, with anything in the world, if you want to learn something, we have to uh, look at this topic. You know, for example, if you want to learn something about football, we go and read books about football. But you can't read books about yourself and your inner world. So mm -hmm. the only thing you can do to learn something about your inner world is actually spend time with your inner world in your own world by yourself. Exactly, Your because no book would tell you how to be yourself. No, exactly. And so it's by that spending that time by myself and seeing which thoughts come up and how I deal with these thoughts. And, you know, as I said, I'm a very sociable person. So in the beginning, I really had to learn to be alone. It was really mm. difficult. What do I do when I'm alone? You know, mm -hmm. so really finding those hobbies that I like doing for myself and then actually doing those hobbies with the intention of self-love because I do them because I enjoy being by myself and yeah so maybe if I, if I would have to like point it down bring it down to one thing I would maybe say like putting intentions in things but that has been something I've learned from being alone a lot it's because it's very interesting we live in a society which is always on because day in day out either it's through the phone I mean there's things going on all the time so to find ourselves, because I even notice myself sometimes, say, even if I'm waiting at the doctor's, I have an appointment at 11 and the doctor is 10 minutes late, I'm sitting there, I would just take my phone out and for no, without any intention, I'll keep on just, you know, going through my emails. No emails for me, no messages there, but still like, my phone is in my hand. So initially, when you try to do this one, you, you mentioned hobbies. Definitely, this is one of the things we talked about. It's been suggested, advisable for people who had always been a part of this always on society, that when the pandemic started, that you were totally confined within your household. So 
uh, developing some kind of hobby really helped. So what kind of hobbies that you developed? Is it something that you already knew or something you came up with as well and you learned some new skills? Definitely new skills. Uh, I, I have lots of, I'm a, well, I like to use the word an outdoor extremist. Like I really like anything outdoors, really. Mm. Uh, definitely a bit, a bit of adrenaline stuff like snowboarding, uh, you know, mountain biking, all these kind of things. But these are not things I can do in my van by myself, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I just started to work more with my hands, like uh, with crystals and gemstones. I used to make uh, jewelry. So my can make jewelry <laughs> with ropes and knots. That's something I don't do so much anymore because I tried to sell it on the street and, you know, there was too much pressure that I kind of lost the passion for it a little bit. Uh, but I carve wood as well into small, small things. But the thing I enjoy the most and maybe my biggest hobby is cooking. Oh, okay. I can spend three, four, five hours cooking. <laughs> making like I have an oven in my van. I bake my own bread. I make my own bread dips. Today I made a pot of soup so I can go in the freezer. Uh, mm. It's just... Yeah, cooking. That's my thing. I mean, I love cooking too because I I tend to do because I'm I come from an Asian background, so we do quite elaborate cooking. Probably you would know, and you've been in Thailand as well. But it's it's different because it's quite similar to Indian cooking, like subcontinental. So, but the thing is that I like to do that. I like the outcome and what you get out of that the experiment, and you feel that when you have the finished result. So that's the motivation. Normally, we say that to do something, you need to feel motivated. That's the wrong idea. When people don't know that motivation comes normally when you have done something that pushes you forward. Yeah. So in your case, you, you have been living through the van and now you are a coach as well. And you're connecting with nature. You have been able to connect with yourself, which is an amazing thing. This is something everyone has to learn to do. So... Did this come, first of all, uh, when you decided to be on your own, learn to be with yourself and wanted to be with yourself in isolation for a while? Was it due to the fact it happened during the COVID or it, it, does it have anything to do with your relationship that you said that during the time when you felt lonely? The isolation definitely didn't come from COVID or any, like I've been traveling for the last five years, roughly. I'm and sure I'm just, it helped, right? This is a proper isolation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it really... Um, you know, it pushed me in a way to be, to spend more time by myself. Mm. You know, it wasn't especially for COVID, uh, but it definitely helped me and it helped me look deeper inside and really look at myself of what do I want to make for myself? Because I used to work in hospitality and then if we'd come back to Belgium, this would be my way of earning money again. But then mm -hmm. this kind of fell away. So I had to look for myself, like what reality do I want for myself? And ideally, it's one where I'm, you know, constantly having income as well and that I can live financially free whilst maintaining that traveling lifestyle. And then, you know, I've heard about coaches before uh, and then just really finding the connection between all of that in that time spending by myself mm. and just re really doing a lot of inner work. And yeah, I kind of lost the question a little bit, to be honest. I was asking in terms of when you found yourself that you have this connection, what generated this idea that you want to live in isolation for a while, just with yeah. yourself, spending time? Does it have anything to do? Because sometimes what happens when we find ourselves uh, that we are hurt in a certain way or we our back is pushed to the wall and we can't go anywhere else, that's the last limit that we have. So that's when suddenly there's a wake up call and then yeah, we, we realize, I mean, was it something for you as well or it just happened? Yeah, no, for me, it's not been like really one experience or one moment in my life. It's really been a build up from, from things and stages because the first time I was, I was in a van was four or five years ago mm. and then the ID slowly started growing uh, and, you know, whilst traveling, meeting digital nomads, this was also, you know, a seed that was planted many years ago of creating this life so it was you know and then just corona helped me nurture those seeds more so they could flower faster than maybe i did without corona mm. uh, for me it's actually been obviously you know there's there's a lot of negative sides to it but as a coach i like to focus on the things that are actually good to it and for me it's been very beneficial because if corona wouldn't have happened then uh, probably i wouldn't have come back from australia as quickly or i would have started traveling sooner Mm. Uh, but now I took the time to build the van that I have now. I built that in the Corona time because it was kind of tied down to being in Belgium a bit longer. 
Okay. Uh, and, you know, if you're traveling, sometimes you're kind of running away from something without really realizing it um, because I didn't have that option really because I was also building and I need, needed to work to build the van. You know, I was just really spending a lot of time in, inside and then, I mean, inside of myself as well because it was also in the middle of winter. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's just been a gradual process and by being pushed to spend that time alone, the seed grew quicker into mm. what it is now. But as you said that sometimes when you travel, uh, you you feel like you're escaping from something mm. I mean, without realizing. So do you still feel that you're doing it unconsciously even sometimes? Does it happen? For sure, for sure, definitely. Uh, this summer I, I traveled um, yeah, through Italy, France, and then down to, down to Spain. And at some point on the road as well, I said, whoa, Mkhtain, you are not grounded anymore. What are you doing? Why are we doing this? And then I just, you know, I really felt like I needed to ground myself, stay in one place for a longer time to, mm -hmm. you know, to again, look inside of what are my wants and my needs and my desires. Uh, so I, I found a workaway. Uh, so it's a place like a rural, a rural piece of plot of land where someone could use some help so i just went there and i parked up there for three or four weeks where was that uh, uh cl somewhere close to valencia oh, in okay Spain. okay and then i just really took this time to ground myself again and to connect my with myself again to make sure that i'm not running away from something and to really look at myself like am i running away from something mm -hmm. why do i feel this this restlessness inside of me where does this come from what can I do to prevent it coming back next time? You know, what do I have to change in my daily routine to to feel more healthy and to feel more good and present in the moment? So, you know, these times where I stand somewhere for a longer time, I really use this time to do these kind of things and to go inside and to really do the internal process. Because you mentioned an interesting thing about the importance of daily routine, definitely the uh, daily habits, it's it's kind of a, like keeping a journal and sticking by it and following it religiously. So what kind of routine do you feel that when you want it to feel grounded? Uh, because when you are free like that, you have the freedom. You, you're, not, uh, you're, you're not working for someone. You choose when you need to work until you go break even, as you said. So you can totally go off the rails and you start doing, you know, whatever. So how does it help you that you keep yourself uh, tied down, so to speak. How did you do that? Yeah, so it's definitely been a whole process to learn this, and and within my coaching, with every client, I go through this as well. Like creating actually like an image of my perfect day. Mm. Uh, so and then have this kind of as a guideline of how I plan in my days, and it doesn't always work. As I said, it's a guideline, not like fixed plan. And for me, it really starts with just a grounded morning routine. So I'm an early bird. Uh, so I'll always wake up between six and seven latest. And then I like to wake up, uh, light my stove in the van. Uh, I do a meditation because that's really for the mind, like clearing the mind. Then some affirmations and visualizations to get energy flowing uh, because visualizations really give me motivation and a drive for the day. And then I do some yoga to 10, 15 minutes. Not, it doesn't have to be an hour, an hour and a half, just to get you know my body a little bit flexible and start my body. And then, you know, I worked on my mind and my body. And then I go for a walk with Nina with a healthy breakfast as well. And after my walk with the dog, that's actually when um, you know, because I grounded myself fully. I use my body. I use my mind. And it's the walk with Nina actually that's the most beneficial for me in the morning. Yeah, like I'm fully awake after my practices, and then I go for the walk. Because there's nothing specifically on my mind yet. I can just be aware of which thoughts come up and then listen to those thoughts and observe those thoughts. And then by doing so, because the thoughts that come up, there are the things that, are, that I'm maybe worrying about or things that I'm suppressing subconsciously because they come up in those moments of rest. Hmm. And in those moments is when I become aware of the things I struggle with. Okay. Now what I'm going to ask you, it probably you probably have answered, so, but still I'm going to ask you. So when you say that you visualize definitely and also affirmation. So visualization, part of when you visualize your perfect day. So what's your idea of a perfect day for you? The general picture for me is that I, uh, so I have my morning routine 
And then I start like working on my coaching between nine and 10. And this is doing calls, doing my social media work. Mm -hmm. uh, and my ideal thing is that I work uh, five hours a day, roughly. Or my Monday, Tuesday can be a bit longer because then I have more energy. And then Thursday, Friday, a bit less. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm still really feeling what is perfect. But anyway, like five, six hours of work. And then in the afternoon, I can just do what I feel again to just feed the soul, be outside in the nature, not behind my computer, spend time with Nina, cooking, doing mm -hmm. those things that I really enjoy, that bring me self-love. And then in the evening, yeah, eat, some, eat a nice meal with some people, make some music, sometimes watch a movie and actually go to bed fairly early around 10 ish. Mm -hmm. Self-love, which is very important. And most of the time we forget to do that. I mean, if we are asked or we're given the responsibility of looking after someone, we do it very carefully with responsibility. What when it comes down to us, we are the worst. So, but also some people do interpret when you say that, okay, I love myself. They say that, oh, you're so selfish. So how would you explain it to people who are listening to it? I mean, what do you uh, understand by self-love or what is self-love? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to say about this. But one thing I'd like to say first is, you know, what you say that it's selfish. But for me, I see that selfishness is the first step towards selflessness. Mm. Because, you know, first we have to feel good inside before we can give the best of ourselves to someone else. True. So it's really good to be the selfish person until you have the strength and the, and the energy to, to go to someone else. But yeah, self-love for me, it's really about unconditional self-love. And this for me is actually always the first step of, of my coach and what I go through as well to go over this specifically, because it's what is unconditional self-love. You know, if you look at what is conditional self-love, it's, you know, love that is, has to be earned. Like you earn a medal in, in the Olympic games, you have to do something to earn this love. Mm. And unconditional love is, that you love everyone. So actually that everyone gets a medal even before they start. Without any hope of any return. Yes, exactly. And, you know, no, no hope for return. No, nothing has to be met. It's just, it's there. But this also means loving every single part of yourself. Yeah, I mean, I also feel that the loneliness part we've been talking about, that it helps beat the loneliness as well. Because when you're a giver, you always have a place in the world somewhere in someone's heart or in someone's thinking, I mean, someone's thought, you were always there. People you are helping at the moment through your coaching. Did you start working with people during the pandemic? Um, so I started a bit uh, professionally uh, roughly a year ago, so in the pandemic. Uh, but I started off with, with friends and friends from friends and, uh, you know, to just gain experience, gain skills. And uh, now it's, it's going everywhere. So what do you face normally people? What kind of problems people normally have? I'm sure it's quite common. We are all humans. We do have similar. It comes in a different form probably. But when you try to go back to the sources, you'll find it's the same thing. So what would you say the main problem as humans in the modern society we, we are facing? Fear. Fear. Because yeah, you, you mentioned definitely. something. So yeah, if you could elaborate a little bit. Fear of what? What are we so afraid of? Well, so this this is always a bit different, but very often it's um, fear of what other people might think, or you know. But then this this we can actually take back to if you go back uh, a few hundreds or a few thousand years when we were still living in in small communities, you know, because that's actually where fear comes from mm -hmm. uh, to understand where this fear comes from. When we were living in small communities. If you were like to be put outside of the community when you, you were not allowed to be part part of it, you had to go back in the wild nature. Mm -hmm. I know be, going out in the nature meant uh, dangerous animals, the elements, like actually it meant certain death if you would have to stay out in nature mm -hmm. for a few days by yourself. People were afraid of, you know, not being part of the community. And it's from there that actually this fear comes from what do other people think of me? Because to, be, to be part of the community, you want as many people as possible to like you. Mm -hmm. And how do you let people like you by not doing anything different, by, you know, being a general person? But these days, even if some people don't like you, you don't have to go out in the wild nature. You know, there's always a place for you. There's enough people. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't resonate in a time from now because we don't have this danger anymore. But we are so afraid of what other people think of us. 
and how other people will receive us because of our fear of dying if we are stepped out of the community, like our amygdala, that's like a part in our brain that that creates this fear. And it just hasn't evolved with us over time as as fast as humanity did. Mm -hmm. And this fear is still the thing that I see the most in most of my clients. What are other people going to think? What is their reaction going to be? Like fear of rejection. Exactly. The need for connection and the fear of rejection too. Uh, driving forces of human life. Uh, when, when they come with this fear of rejection, especially, that's down to the things that we end up not doing and also many things left unfulfilled, which causes anxiety disorder at some point in your life when most of the time, many people were, even in research, they're asked what you think that what your failure had been in life. And they say the things I wanted to do, but I didn't try. But this is one of the reasons. Say, for example, someone wants to start a podcast and they're thinking, okay, if I talk, what I'm going to talk about, are they going to laugh at me? And would it have any material? But why would they want to listen to me? All these negative voices. So do you get these negative voices anytime? Because things you want to do, they're quite out there. Not everyone is doing it. So every now and then, and you told yourself that when you started traveling, suddenly you felt, what am I doing? Where am I? So how do you deal with these negative voices or what negative voices do you have? Yeah, I, I definitely have these voices as well. You know, even though I'm a coach, I'm still a human being and it's part of being human. There's no person that doesn't have these things. But for me, it really came down to, or where I learned to step over this, this, this fear was by understanding you know, yes, I will reject some people and some people might not like me, but I'm not trying to have everyone like me. What I actually like is to create a community, really strong, connected community with the same values and the same, you know, the same expectations and the same ideas and dreams. And by just being my authentic self, that's why I think it's so important. Mm -hmm. You don't just attract the people that really align with what you want in life, but you also reject the people that don't. Exactly. So yes, you reject some people or you will be rejected by some people. But if you are your authentic self, is it a bad thing that the people that don't like your authentic self are not in your life? Mm. Well, for me, it's not. No, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And that cre also creates, by doing this, you create somehow of a more closed community or close is maybe not the right word, but a more connected community because mm. they connect on so many more levels than what everyone likes to put it that way. No, that's very true. I mean, knowing who you are, this is the podcast I've already dis discussed with you. And we always mention because we have started doing a live stream because we want to create the community, as you said, around some depth, more interaction about like minded people. But the thing is, when you're looking, you're visualizing yourself, uh, your future self. So you have to sur surround yourself with those kind of energy. Otherwise, you'll be confused anyway. So for you, what are the advices normally when people come to you and say that I'm feeling lonely? So as we already said that there's a difference between being alone and feeling lonely. So say someone is telling you uh, from your experience, be because you have chosen it for yourself to a certain extent, how would you say that they can help themselves to beat the loneliness if they feel or they go through it? Yeah, it's, it's always a little bit unique to other people. And I don't like to say, you know, do this, do that. I, mm. You know, I ask questions and I see what people come up with themselves. But for me in general, it's, you know, when you feel lonely is when you don't enjoy the time with yourself. Mm. So, and when you don't enjoy the time with yourself, you probably don't really love yourself. Yeah. You know, and because you feel lonely or a lot of people feel lonely because they don't have the distraction that other people give them. And then they go, you know, so it's it really, for me, comes down to loving yourself unconditionally. And then, yeah. you know, part of this is also finding those hobbies that you can do when you are by yourself. And this really takes away a lot of the loneliness. Yeah. And some of the loneliness, I think we create for ourselves, say, for example, when we look for similar people, because we have to understand one thing as humans, even though we are the same species, but part of the same species but the thing is we are quite dissimilar in many ways say how you think what you do i might not do the same thing but the thing it doesn't mean that we cannot connect so that's where the problem starts sometimes say some people 
we are scared or afraid of asking for help from others. Say some people, okay, what he or she might think of me. Again, the fear. So this consciousness that over time that we build, normally when we are young, it's, it's a research that as a child, we tend to be very free and whatever we want to do, we can do. But over time, we reach a point when everyone is directing us, giving us advice and telling us what is right, what is wrong. So in your case, when you're growing up, did you have to go through that? I understand I had to go through it, definitely. So did you have to go through it? And at the time, what do you feel like? Or did you find yourself confused and you followed, started following other people's footsteps and suddenly you have this wake up call? How did it work for you? Well, definitely like why I or similar to a lot of people because I have a bigger brother that was two years older or is two years older than me. Mm -hmm. And even though we're very different people, I just followed in his footsteps. So I did the same studies that he did. And you know, I followed him up until I was 16, I think. And then mm -hmm. I have a good head on my shoulder. So I never really had to study. I studied science, uh, science sports. And it was only when I was 17 and we had to learn um, anatomy. Mm. So that's, that's where I really had to study to, you know, learning all the names of the bones and the muscles and, uh, and trying to study this I was like, wow, this really doesn't interest me. So that for me was the kind of the wake up call. What am I doing with my life? Mm. You know, who am I living it for? And obviously, you know, I was just 17. There was still a whole journey to do, but that moment was for me, the, the, the wake up call, like you say, and that moment as well, I stopped studying for that year because in Belgium, the last two years of your school, you have to do in the same uh, direction, the same course. But I was already in my pre to last year. Okay. So the only way to change school and to change the course, I had to do my year over. Okay. Uh, so then I went to another school that was more aligned to my values. And that's also when I went to study uh, human science, where we talked a lot about uh, behavioral patterns from people. And it's mm. also where the seed got planted to that. I was actually very interested in mental health and how the human brain works. But you, you're definitely driven towards, as I can see, more connected, as you said, you're a sociable person as well, and also a very social person. But there are times, even when you mean everything that's good for someone and you don't mean any harm to anyone, people can always keep on uh, misconstrue you and they misinterpret your intentions. And definitely it can be tiring when it happens in your case do you how do you handle that because this is a very common phenomenon i think yeah, yeah it's it's very common you know taking things per personally wrongly interpreting things but I definitely learn to to work my way around words and to use words in a smarter way but in the end, if someone still really interprets it in a wrong way or reacts in it in a wrong way, obviously I try to correct my words. Or, but the main thing that I always remember myself is I am responsible for, for my words and my actions. True. But I'm not responsible for how someone else reacts to me. Mm. I am responsible for how I react to that person wrongly interpreting me. So, you know, there I have to stay calm and I have to make him understand my true intentions but it's not my responsibility how he reacts to me yeah and it's you know pulling that line in between that really gives that freedom in this sense but if someone doesn't want to be changed you know it won't work you know mm. I, I see it how can you see the difference between a truth seeker or someone that just looks for validation of his own ideas it's when you come with a different statement and whatever it is they'll say no 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 i defend my thing Mm. You know, so if they if they don't even try to understand what you are saying they're not willing to adjust their beliefs and then it just stops there for me there's one vice we all have i mean i do definitely have it procrastination yes so we do have a, uh we do prepare a to-do list the night before sometimes the day you have a huge to-do list and always the hardest one, you keep on suppressing it down and you're like, okay, you're scared that I'm not going to touch it. You want to do the easier one and you feel like oh, I've done something. So do you have those moments? Definitely. You know, uh, as a kid, I used to procrastinate everything all the time and I still <laughs> do it, but I'm more in control of it. Mm. Uh, and you know, how I learned to regain this control for me was, first of all, take the difficult one first. 
but also you know don't be hard on yourself when you don't do it mm. be kind to yourself because when you're like ah oh, uh, come on martin you still did do it today and i'm gonna be angry at myself then the next day i'm like oh no i'm just not gonna start this because if i don't finish i'm gonna be angry with myself again whilst mm. if you say martin you didn't do it today but you know tomorrow another chance this will like give me more motivation to try again the next day and another really really good one and maybe even more powerful one is uh you know i'm now going to take a, a, an obvious example but you can do this with a task as big as you want like yeah. for example i want to do yoga mm -hmm. you know you have to actually go to the yoga and it seems like such a big task so just start by thinking okay first i'm gonna put on my shoes and you go and put on your shoes okay now i'll collect my yoga mat and collect everything i need and now i'll go to the car and then i'm driving and then i'm at the yoga so you know just by breaking it down to really small steps that seem very easy to do like going to put on your shoes is a very easy thing to do mm. but going all the way to yoga at once seems sometimes you know something distant and difficult but because you actually start the the process of of mm. completing this task but in this case of putting on your shoes you get the ball rolling and you yeah. get the momentum going and once the momentum is going there's you know you'll keep on going until it's finished Most it's like small pieces time. of motivation because every time you're winning over something like okay one step is done okay i've done something go for the next one i think also removing obstacles so when you what you were you want to do say you you had uh broken them in steps when you're saying they're going to your car picking up your bags say for example you need your shoes okay your shoes probably you leave it where you would see it or on your way out that's where you're like i pack my bags everything is ready i have no excuse so i literally have to pick it so make it easier for yourself probably another thing and try small steps as you said so these are the things trying taking small steps i think that probably helps if i can add one more thing to to the previous actually please you know, um something else that really helps with very difficult tasks or you know is not looking at what you have to do to get there but trying to visualize yourself actually doing the act like like uh you know with if i go to the yoga i visualize myself finishing the yoga class mm. and then getting into the emotion how it feels when i actually finished it and because then i'm focusing on how good it feels when i'm done it i will have more motivation to take the steps to actually go and do it yeah so you know that's just shift that focus to what you like about it the ending instead of what you don't like about it you you getting to that point no also human brain it doesn't understand even when you imagine something visualize something it doesn't know that you're visualizing if you see yourself you're doing it it thinks that okay this is what the reality is i mean that's how the brain works so you just have to see yourself doing it that's what people say that you want to be successful okay you want to see okay your business is going somewhere or say for example your career path or you are studying for something it's really hard you can't see but you want to be a doctor say then you see yourself okay i'm in a hospital i'm a doctor i'm doing this surgery and this with these people you start having these things and subconsciously that's how it's programmed it's nice so in terms of your podcast at the moment what are your plans i mean where do you see it going and what are the initiatives that you're taking that would help other people yeah so we, there's a very big vision there so the growth collective podcast uh it's how how it's called that's actually our platform when we go in depth on specific topics uh in form of mental health personal transformation and all this obviously to inspire people to give people value and actual actual tangible action steps how they can grow in their life mm -hmm. but the goal from actually the growth collective is the is the general thing and that will be our community it's a facebook group as well where we help people find inner freedom so to break through their limitations to break through their fears to find that internal freedom to live that authentic life and to actually help them give them the action steps so they can continue living in this way mm. even after listening even after being part of the group where people can come and ask questions get support you know what we talked about earlier connect with the people that you align with the most mm. so you know this will be like a group where we can find those kind of people that we need or that had experiences that we are looking for to have so you can have you know talks with people that have that life that you want that's great i mean uh, so 
I hope that you guys are really, I mean, I've listened to the podcast. It's very useful and I would um, request everyone who's listening today to go and have a listen to Growth Collective. And it's available in Apple Podcast or Spotify? Uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast and Google Podcast. Okay, great. Uh, so that's one. And also to find you, Martin, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, so that's on um, on Instagram, underscore Martin, uh, but then Martin with a J behind the I, and then mm -hmm. Dots me, S-M-E-E-T-S. -E okay, we, we'll add that one in the description as well, so people would find it, it would be easier for them. Yes. So they can get uh, in direct contact with you through Instagram? Yeah, that's my Instagram uh, that I use personally for my coaching and giving my kind of value as well. And then in there, uh, in the link in my bio, you can find the link to the podcast and to the Growth Collective Facebook group and to my website, uh, because my website is uh, www.mardainsmeets, so just my full name again, .com. Okay. Sorry, I had started calling you Martin, but I how do you say that? Um, well, actually, Martin is more than fine. It's uh, Originally, it's Martin. Martin, but okay. I've been yeah, but for me, um, in every country, it's a different thing. In French, it's Martin. In uh, Italy, it's Mar Martino. Okay. In uh, German, it's Machtel. So for me, Martin is like, it's the easiest for all the countries for Thank me to you. explain. You have just instantly made me feel better because I was feeling guilty that, okay, I just totally made, you know, messed your name up. Uh, so Martin, thanks a lot for having this time with us and all the snippets of information, advice and the... Uh, and the wisdom through your lived experiences that you shared with people, I'm sure it'd be valuable and they will find it through your podcast, Growth Collective, yes. then your Facebook group. I hope people would join and they'll be beneficial through it. So before we leave, um, what piece of advice or at least from your own experience, I always try to be very wary of that thing advice because instantly then you make yourself like you are higher than other people you know in some way but from your own experience what would you suggest people to practice that would instantly help them to find a path which is quite positive for their for their life or how they want to see themselves in future well there's actually two things i would love to say to that and that's uh, practice unconditional self-love uh, and it sounds very difficult but it's actually easier than you think just think about the things that you like doing or think about the things that you do to love someone else and then just do them for yourself. Like uh, what I do sometimes, I massage my feet, but then with the intention of self-love. I cook myself a nice meal with the intention of, uh, I like myself, I love myself. And because I love myself, I take the time to cook this nice meal. Mm -hmm. And by doing this, you just get you know, you stand more open to what is coming to you and you feel more confident to think about what you want and find that better path. And then the second one is really visualization. Like I believe, in my opinion, it's one of the most powerful tools there is by visualizing that future that you want for yourself, doing it in the present tense, going in detail, you get that strong connection of the future that you want. And that really becomes like a compass in your life, like, you know, it's, it's when you uh, go turn on the navigation in your car, you have to put in a destination as well. And a lot of people are living life without a destination. And by creating this vision, you kind of create the destination of where you want your life to go to. So that this way, it's going to be a lot easier to navigate through life.